Okay, okay. Whoops. There we go. My sister was a marketing major. All right, take it away, guys. <laughs> Interesting. Anyway, game one, moves to semis. That is, in fact, recognize, rec recognize, you recognized, recognize gaming, mega. Ugh, I feel like I'm chock full of these today. What the hell? <laughs> uh, that was a rough counter. You know, Fire Emblem counters, gonna be honest, not very good. Like, maybe Lucina's is okay, but, like, Krom's awful. Roy's, not great. Ike's, I don't know the exact frame data, but it doesn't feel very good. <laughs> If you really think about it, they really wasted a special with many Fire Emblem characters. Yeah, if, like, unless you're specifically Smash 4 Corrin, and you have that, like, absurd counter that kills you at, like, 40, like, it just, it's never really worth going for when you have a whole bunch of other tools that either give you armor or some sort of invulnerability or come out super fast. Like, only Robin has a dedicated down special. Is that right? Yeah, only Robin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was thinking about him, just like, wow, they really did this with the entire cast of Fire Emblem. Because, like, you could say Byleth is in a counter, but it's a worse Falcon Punch. I guess it's a better Falcon Punch because it breaks shield, but, you know, oh, yeah. it's still not really all that applicable. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, wow, this is actually pretty even. I'm kind of surprised. Yeah, you would think... It's, it's one of the things that most gets me with some of Mouse Rat's play, especially when you compare him to players like DM and Esam, who are like really confident in their edge guarding flow charts and in their uh, option select. Mouse Rat is so much more like tit for tat. And while he is able to get things like that, like that was a really good like uh, down tilt setup into the jab lock, uh, he never pushes that. He never looks for that. And he's always trying to look for like what is this like the safest thing. What, like what's the safe option? What's the safe tool that he can use? That being said, that was a really hard read. So <laughs> yeah, Mousetrap is known for that. He just has these crazy thunders here and there, and you just never expect it. He's doing loops in Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, it's okay, okay, but it's not impossible. I guess nothing in this game is impossible. But it's just, you know, an extra 5 to 10 frames can make it feel impossible. <laughs> I like that drag down air into up tilt. DI properly though, so it wasn't able to get conversion. Yeah, Pikachu is a constant, like, a constant DI check, and while he can cover either or any forms of DI if you react quick enough, uh, that's kind of the trick. You have to react quick enough and you have to be ready to to extend in the right way. That's that's where Pikachu really unlocks a lot of his combo game because yeah he can get that like up to upper upper back air shenanigans and that does like 28 but if you unlock his the away DI or the down DI you can start setting up into turn around down tilts and set and do all of those kinds of resets which is where Pikachu can really start killing you. <laughs> Or you really practice like specific uh, up air bridges, which is just really hard. <laughs> That's where we attack the center stage. Uh, please reset neutral button. The mashy reset button. <laughs> I would kind of love that with Mega sometimes, where he, he would do this in previous sets too, where sometimes. He'll start like look, he'll look like he's spacing out in air and just like really fishing for something. Then he'll just raw dash attack you or raw F tilt you. It's like, what? Where did that come from? Why did that happen so fast? It, you know, shows Ike's biggest benefit in the Smash Four engine is that he has a burst mobility range more so than almost any other game. Yeah, and it's really good, especially against Pikachu because he's a little bit more on the lighter side, so he's able to kill him pretty early. Pikachu's classic exclusive weakness, uh, yeah, single weakness. Uh, he's a little bit hard, or two weaknesses. He's a little bit hard to play sometimes. Hey, you got that counter. He's as light as a feather. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, not another one. That was a bad counter. <laughs> didn't even hit. It landed, but didn't hit. Classic Shulk.
Okay, yeah. I'm that was sure another bad counter. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I guess he's trying to, to expect. He's kind of expecting uh, Mouse Rat to be a little bit aggro with some of these down tilts that he's been putting out. And uh, a lot of the times, Mouse Rat's big tell uh, when he's looking for dash attack is that he stays super grounded and he's dash dancing a lot. Uh, if he dash dances a lot if he's looking for uh, looking for dash attack so maybe he's trying to expect something like that but master has put himself back in the air and he's looking to catch all of these jumps <laughs> like kill percent for near up there maybe I would say up air probably kills if it's uh, if it's high enough but connecting out of Nair, he might be a little bit too late <laughs> okay oh wow uh -oh. Rough trade. Throwing out that up B. Let's see how he comes out from ledge. Yeah, let's go for the roll. Oh, I wanted to see another up B, to be honest. I would have bet the farm on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stalling him out. See. Those are like three side Bs in a row, but it works, so it, it's okay. Yeah, like side B is, it's that innate 50-50, but also it's, you can cancel it on if you, yeah, you can cancel it on stage pretty well. Like, oh, you see, he pulled up shield immediately. Um, of course, it doesn't caught the rollback with that uh, over that overshot forwarder. So, Ooh. a a tight one at the end there from Mouse Rat, uh, kind of letting the lead slip just a little bit. But he he caught that roll, and he'll take game one because of it. It's an interesting interaction. They just both whiffed the aerials and then Mouse Rack gets that nice read. There we go, 56. And I see you, uh, Mr. Strudel, in the chat saying, hard to play, huh? And yes, Pikachu is one of the harder top tiers to play. Just because Teachel is an all purpose, like, haha, like now you're either shielding or jumping, like, projectile, one of the best in the game, doesn't mean that some of their strings and some of their tools are hard, not hard to execute. Yeah, yeah, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> like, Tijol is not hard to use. The rest of the kit, like, the rest of the full combo game is a little bit, like, you gotta be a little bit careful. Yeah, he had a couple Nair loops in there, which impressed me. Yeah, that's tight. Ooh, nice decision to go to Smashville. Uh, is this Ike's best stage? I like to think so, just because he gets a lot of advantage. Because if you think about it, if he falls from mid-plat, he can cover under platform. Or, if Pikachu is uh, at the end of the stage, he can still cover it because of how big his sword is. So he can run off plat in there, and it covers the, almost the entire side of the stage. Yeah, I usually... Like, I usually am the one to say that, like, if you're playing against a character from the Fire Emblem series, ban Smashville. But, I, I mean, Mouse Rat counterpicked here a bunch of times, set, well, a bunch, twice overall in, the, in their Tilde set, and several times over in a couple other sets we saw on stream. Alas, that's kind of the, the weakness of Ike. Uh, fate rears its ugly head once again. Uh, Aether is so interruptible. Oh, that was an interesting thunder. That was a huge hitbox. <laughs> that was, it was huge. <laughs> I'm a little bit intimidated. It's just uh, show, sh put it out on the table and said, check out my blue thunder. <laughs> oh, man, I'm tired of these innuendos. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, he, forward. <laughs> he held forward on that Aether. <laughs> trying to... <laughs> Right, runoff back air, like you mentioned, the runoff runoff platform aerials with Ike are, uh, oof, they're really good. <laughs> Using the pl center platform to great effectiveness. Uh, Mega is trying to, he, like, it's it's a little bit he's a little bit button uh, button heavy. Uh, some may call it maxing even, mm -hmm. uh, but it it's all in the idea that Ike doesn't have a lot of the the quickness on the ground to F consistently anti-air something like quick attack so he has to start to try and predict it 
Uh, like many characters. Uh, okay, hold in into that second thunder, sure. <laughs> I, I feel like in general, when it comes to like mashing, it's like it really all depends. Like I think a lot of characters have a quote unquote like good button. So like in Ike's case, like one of his quote unquote good buttons is actually up the out of shield. So you'll see a lot of Ikes, or I guess not Mega because he's obviously more skilled, but a lot of like Ikes that are still in the process of learning the character will kind of mash that option. And it works very well because of the armor. So it's like, sure it is mashing, but at the same time, th th there is a reasoning for it. Yeah, like, there's... To go into this weird tangent, mashing isn't inherently a bad thing. Mashing thoughtlessly is, and there's a bunch of those buttons that like you can just use without thinking about it, and it's often pretty good. Uh, Ike Nair w was one of those buttons. Uh, but... You know, you can still mash a button or mash a couple buttons uh, to, for them to come out at their earliest opportunity and it still be effective and it still be with a reasonable thought process behind it. My mic keeps dropping. I, I am apologize. <laughs> it's all good. I'm surprised that F to killed mid stage. Oh, it's unbelievable. Okay, nice getting the dash attack to finally close out that stock. In a while. If there's anything that, uh, that Ike kept from game to. Game to game, it wasn't speed, but it was raw power. And he doesn't need much, but when he hits you, it, you're going for a ride. And as we mentioned, Pikachu is, Pikachu's big, big flaw is that he's really light. And things like Aether, uh, things like uh, just, you know, that, a, a reverse F-Tilt or any of these Nair combos, like the, he gets so much more mileage out of them because he doesn't need to get to as high as a kill percent as long as he can make Mouse Rack keep missing these edge guards, which he's been doing really well throughout uh, game one and game two. He's making Mouse Rack work for these kills. It's yeah, definitely, and I think that's where Mouse Rack yeah. kind of takes advantage. It's like he knows that he can't really close to the stock too soon, so he tries to depend on covering edge guards, and, I'm sorry, covering recoveries to edge guard. Um, but I don't know, Mega seems to be making that hard. Like his side B recoveries are almost spot on, and with absolutely like no lag on the side B it's like what can you really do besides reset neutral oh, okay that roll was a little bit of a mix like he didn't didn't go for anything crazy as the F catches the bad DI as he uh, the parry let him uh, interrupt mouse rat to dash away all right one of these characters is gonna land one of their dash attacks and it is going to kill I'm expecting it not be oh wow I kind of called it um <laughs> Oh, he caught out the DIN, but had uh, <laughs> he had it he had it too right. Missed the blue thunder. Uh, a little funky box. Wait, is he? <laughs> Ooh, okay. There's a lot to unpack in that final interaction. <laughs> that was uh, you know what? I, I'm just gonna look at the replays and assess it from there. I, I'm a little bit confused as to what just happened. So, a Aether got interrupted by the thunder duel. Mm -hmm. And so he just he he buffered the other one, and Mouse Rat tried to Mouse Rat tried to edge guard him prematurely, be, and was caught by the Aether because he had buffered the second. See, so like uh. he could have instead of doing that, gotten into a proper spacing and just F smashed the Aether. Like that is consistent. It's easy for Pika to do. F smash is a very large disjoint, and you're almost guaranteed to hit the sweet spot if you space it right, uh, to where Aether will just run into the sweet spot of uh, Pika's F smash. Instead, Mouse Rat did not do that, and uh, he died for it. <laughs> yeah. Dispensable. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, honestly, he just, he doesn't really need to challenge Ike as much off stage. Like, I think when you have a projectile like Tijol, all you really need to do is kind of just mash Tijol off stage, let Ike get hit by it, and then kind of just go on from there. I think as soon as you start going out there with forward airs, nares, or any sort of aerial, I can kind of just power through that with the up E. So it's kind of nice to have a little disjoint kind of do the work for you, as opposed to going aggro off stage and just dashing in. He just died for it. Yeah, it's a little bit harder than a, than Krom's up B because it has that twirl at the top. Mm -hmm. So it can get, you can get caught a lot easier, which is why things like Thunder Jolt and things like a Pika S-Smash are a lot more consistent at stopping Aether. Hence why 
like uh, Mega was going for the quick draw more often. So stopping that quick draw, I completely agree, is going to be a little bit more on, well, should be a little bit more on the priority list for Mouse Rat, so he can force that Aether and therefore interrupt that Aether more times than he has been in the past two games. Well, nice little conversion, upper to back here, keeping it simple. Pika back air, it's great in auto cancel, but more it's more the combo finisher in midair. It doesn't get much more off of it than that. T Troll is pretty good, chat. T Troll is a pretty good button. I he followed that drift hard, but wasn't rewarded for it. I like that little like gear versus oh, Pedro. It's like come back, just gear versus towards him, and then he can net like an aerial afterwards. Oh, okay, but just the wrong angle, just the wrong angle. Yeah, that's a can be kind of the issue when you don't have a double jump uh, as Pikachu is that you don't get that time to set up your proper positioning and set up your proper angle. That was a wonky grab. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, he jumped into the grab. I'm just surprised he shield grabbed at all against Ike. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm surprised as well. As for to catch the jump, Ike is gonna recover. Nice. Ooh, I like that. He was able to do the drift back back here. Hey, classic counter. Classic counter. We love to see it. Even if it's. We do, in fact, love to see it. Love to see, even if it is somewhat wasteful. At the very least, a get off me tool is better than nothing. And while Ike does have several, a counter might be a little bit less. Uh, it might be a little bit less committal than something like Aether, because you're. If you miss Aether, your opponent has a bunch of time not only to punish it, but to react to it and think of their proper punish. For counter, there's less that. Oh, that shield's over low. What are these? <laughs> there was a lot of smash attacks in neutral that just... I don't know, it seemed like Mouse Rat really thought he could punish the down smash or like the up smash. But when it comes to moves like that, you kind of just have to evade it. Sometimes rolling can actually be beneficial in that situation, because like... If the hitbox is approaching you, and you roll just in time, you can usually get a grab off of it, or you can kind of just mash your fastest option. So I think when you try to shield it, it's like, well, you're getting shield damage, and it's safe. It's not a really good idea. Yeah, plus the extra four frames so that come from uh, dropping shield and like acting out of it, uh, while jumping out of shield is uh, ignores those. Uh, Punishing a smash attack on shield is a lot harder than it seems, especially with some of the stronger or safer uh, uh, forward strongs and up strongs that characters seem to have. All right, nice. Bit. Yeah, no way. No, catching that. How many? How many? Catching that neutral guy. How many frames is Ike Efto active for? I wonder aloud. Yeah. I actually like that he went for F tilt. Like if you notice, he went from kind of just doing the burst option dash attack to just dash forward, and then F tilt, and it worked perfectly. F tilt is uh, it, well, it's active from frames 12 to 13, so it's active for one or I don't know if that means one frame or two frames, but I assume it's two frames. Yeah, I think that it's active on 12 and 13. So yeah. That's you get one frame to catch it and you cover it with two frames, you know? You double your chance. <laughs> <laughs> and Mega's uh, he's uh, I mean Mouse Rat's playing this playing like he has a stock down and he's playing it smart. He's not trying to overextend anymore and he's he's just waiting almost waiting for up throw to kill. But Mega I, I, I really respect Mega's patience on ledge. While that jump was a little bit risky, uh, for the almost the entire set thus far. He's been waiting for Mouse Rat to commit to something before it picking his ledge option, whether it be neutral getup or jump or what have you. Oh, Pikachu classic, but you don't get more than three. <laughs> Unless you like do a dash, then an attack cancel, I think. I think you have to like really hard commit to the third. Yeah, I think, I think attack fourth, cancel right? gives us enough momentum. Good to learn. Good to learn attack canceling. For if you have a character that can really use it. I like Pikachu. Oh, so yeah. Use it a lot. 
<laughs> These downers, man. Mega plays like a like a nut sometimes. Like he goes for like it's safe, right? He's putting these nairs and he's putting these down airs like at full hop height when he knows his opponent is always respecting the short hop nair or the uh, the landing nair. But he get he's putting him in a spot where they are safe and the re the risk reward is almost entirely in his favor. So you have to respect it and you have to respect Ooh. the short hop nair. He finally got it. He got the uh, the roar like sour spot nair to up there. You know, if it if it's one one a game, that's a stock. It's worth it to go for. Ike's Ike's neutraler. It's it, it put him in what high tier, almost in top tier at the start of the game. Now it's you know it's not so it's not so feared anymore. It doesn't get him as nearly as high on the tier list, but it's still something you have to respect. And it looked like I don't know what if Di was, but it looked like he went straight up twice like on the nair he went straight up and then the upper he also went straight up i'm curious to know if he was diing properly i don't know uh, i want to say perhaps uh the the final one mm -hmm. also uh, caleb yes it was nerfed but it didn't take away the combo it just made its window tighter in ex it was nuffed that's that's the word we're used for yeah, I, Nair, Nair yeah, specifically go. was nerfed, but Ike as a whole, he got down tilt buffs, he got, and he got Aether dash buffs attack. to compensate, and, and dash attack, true, 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 true. So he got nuffed overall, and it's up to discretion if you think the uh, he's an overall worse or better character. I think overall he's a better character, just because he... <laughs> oh yeah, he just pops. Alright, there we go. Let's grab. Ooh, who's actually gonna go for the drag down air combos? Okay. Yeah, sometimes you can. It's it's a little bit cheesy, but if you do that drag down right next to ledge, but you make it so that you push it far enough to where they don't land, uh, you can try and make the other player buffer air dodge. And it's a little bit corny and it's a little bit cheesy, but it's a thing. <laughs> a bunch of characters can do that. Like if you have a drag down, like uh, Greninja mains can do that, but oftentimes they go for drag down up air down tilt because you miss the platform or you miss the stage and then f smash you because you're holding it yeah you know things that characters have that make it so they kill you very easily down air oh, okay he went for the nair <laughs> <laughs> you always gotta use the nair yeah it's it's potent it's a potent tool <laughs> talking about good buttons can't get much better than ike nair oh just a little bit late He's been going for that a couple times. Whenever he knows Mouse Rat's gonna commit to Quick Attack. Yeah, it's not... it's the thunder. That up through Thunder is a whole lot harder than uh, Pichu's. In fact, it is frame perfect. Um, with Pichu, you have like a whole lot more room. You have a whole lot more more wiggle room, but uh, oof. up through Thunder for Pikachu is good. thankfully, thankfully so. Jesus, imagine if Pikachu had that. <laughs> And Pichu oh. up throw thunder. Oh god. That'd be horrendous. But speak, speaking of thunders, he did end up getting that kill. Um, he does a really good job of just catching air dodgers or jumps with the thunder. And I think that's really good for Pikachu. Because when he has trouble sealing up those stocks, it's really important to really get that thunder as optimal as can. Good job on Mouse Rat's part. Yeah, I kind of want to see him start to really implement that further into some of his edge guarding uh, flow charts. Because while he's kind of just resigned himself to ledge trapping and uh, making Mega go high and then trying to punish that. Uh, if he goes super low, he can, or at least moderately low, he can place the Thunder in a way to interrupt some of these uh, some of these quick draws and then have him forced to Aether. Jeez, these quick draws, man. These jumps from Mega look so intimidating. <laughs> you never know. He's either gonna go for falling air or he's gonna go for dash attack. You never know which one's which. Yeah, uh, Mega has taken taken his fair shots with just an empty land dash attack, uh, as opposed to one of the ex almost always expected falling there. So like, if Ike's above me, I'm expecting there. So any mix-up can come as a bit of a surprise. Great, uh, like we see there. Great full hop, uh, empty land grab. 
Yeah, and speaking of near mix-ups, there is one particular mix-up that I actually look forward to seeing. You may or may not do it. There's this mix-up at ledge where if you do a falling air in time, you can actually combo into the up three spike. It's very, very yeah. cheesy, but it's very good. Uh, I think we're we're past the percent window for that one specifically, but yeah, like Nair and Uppy is a thing around, like usually for most characters around 60, it might be a little bit variable with the, because Pikachu's a little bit lighter, but oh man. Pikachu. I kind of like mean... that. He, he dashes along with the Thunder Duel, so it's like if Mega wants to approach, he gets hit by the Thunder Duel leaves himself open and hits stuff. That was good. Yeah. At 180, though, you can kind of just take take the Thunder Jolt sometimes and hold jab or hold another button uh, because you, you're taking, you're dead to anything, almost anything anyway, as he died to that forward air for his final stop. Now it's just a matter of can Mega... Sure. Yes, yes, he can. Yes, he absolutely can. You have the good button. Yeah, he finally punished, uh, instead of punishing one of those with counter, as we see another one right there, um, <laughs> he said use the armor on upbeat. Hmm, mistiming the grab. Did he pancake under the grab? No, he uh, air dodged down and he mistimed, uh, he mistimed it, because I think he was going for neutral tech timing. Oh, I see. If he had pancaked Ooh. under the grab, there was there was reason to be, to be angered. <laughs> I was about to put out a Easter statement single-handedly on that Pikachu pancake. I hate it so much. It's, you know, yeah. <laughs> there's just, there's nothing really to say about it. They, they nerfed it with Pichu. You can do the same, Nintendo. We believe in you. <laughs> it's unbelievable. And I think in, that, in this matchup particularly, it's really good. Because it's like... If you, mi if you miss the grab with Ike, you're not going to get any of those early percent follow-ups. And also, if Ike wants to hit low, he's going to have to rely on, like, down tilt. And that's going to be annoying, because then Mousetrack can kind of just T-Jolt away. And then he's safe. Nice grab. Yeah. Hmm. He's looking for some of these names. Oh, okay. He got the grab with Thunder, like I mentioned. It, the Thunder Cloud spawns, I think, on frame two. So the Thunder almost always comes out, uh, even with potential interruption. Yeah, Mouse Rat looking for some of these dash stacks. Looking to start throwing T Jolts, playing a lot more grounded. Finally calls out a jump, but that's not going to kill Ike from center stage. Ooh, yeah. that might. Ooh. Nicely done from Mouse Rat. Just going for that dash stack kill. Barely seeing that that stock. Yeah, his windows to punishes got a little bit. He expected the the quick draw uh, over his head and onto stage, so he had a high window to punish. We did see the turnaround F tilt start to come out though, so it was a good job of Master Rat of committing to that read and getting a kill off of it. All right, two two, game five. Where could we go? What could it be? He hop into. That was beautiful. Empty Hop is probably like, well, it's not only an underrated mix-up because of how uh, how powerful Full Hop is in this game. Like, just landing is inc like we saw right there. Like, landing out of a Full Hop and baiting any sort of aerial approach from any player and any character. Uh, if you can properly anti-air that, see, look at this. Look at this. The F tilt start. But Pikachu's dash attack, I think, is frame 10. And as we mentioned prior, uh, Ike's F tilt is frame 12. So hit him with the headbutt, the skull bash, the. Oh no, skull bash is side B. The tackle. Tackle. Pikachu, use tackle! <laughs> Yeah. On, on the subject of full hopping, I, I forget, what's the multiplier, like, what's the ratio from short hop to full hop aerial, uh, aerials? Do you know that number? Uh, I thought it was, like, on full hop, it's base damage, but on short hop, the damage gets multiplied by 0.85. I don't, don't quote me on that. Uh, but it's, like, full hop damage is, like, standard damage, and the multiplier is on short hop and reducing the damage, I think. 
All right, down through back air. Let's go. Down through back air. Unique combos. Most of the time you see up uh, up throw like fair from uh, from Ike players, but you know what? If you can combo into a raw bear, it's most often worth it. <laughs> Especially as Ike. Yeah, most most definitely. And you you notice Mega with these really interesting follow ups. Like sometimes he'll do like a tech chase on a platform and instead of going for a fair he goes for the up air so you can combo into another up air or even another nair just extending his combos as far as he can yeah training like it's what we saw out of uh, really like the the prominent ike mains not to say mega isn't prominent uh, he's definitely definitely certainly a, in a tier of his own but uh, players like ryuga that really push the care push ike's meta to its fullest they they're they're picking uh stages like ps2 and smashville so they can get those nair nair chains and start laddering you up higher and set up for those up air kills oh okay <laughs> you got the, the, the phantom footstool <laughs> you know the extra invincibility mix up trying to bait out a rising aerial so you can land with uh, some sort of nair downer probably nair Man, mega is playing this He's playing this steady. Like he knows that damage never really matters once he's past 130 because Pikachu has enough potent kill options anyway. So he's just trying to find his he's trying to find his hit. He's trying to find his trick. As Mouse Rat continues to miss some of these raw down uh not raw, these uh beer rush down bees. So it's it's safe still because Thunder is incredible. Uh, but <laughs> just went across the stage and dash attack and that was <laughs> Risky to say the least, and not not quite punished for it, but not to the point of death yet. Ooh, Mega that was, was death right there. Yes, that scout, air dodge is poor. He scouted that air dodge out hard. Mm. Most definitely. And back of zero zero piece we go. <laughs> Rising aerial. He wants Mouse Rat to jump and throw a button out. Like that's. He wants every. It seems like he's been wanting him to do that all set, and now he's somehow properly conditioned him to do so. Like so many, so many counters this game. Yeah, and you, you wouldn't expect it because obviously, like counter, it's. I, I don't know. I don't see any sort of optimal like application for that move in this specific matchup. Like you would think that maybe in, I suppose, like um, Ike to another Fire Emblem character, let's say Krom. I could see where counter is optimal because you're going to counter the recovery, you're going to get a gimp. In this matchup, it's like, I don't know, I feel like it's more optimal to kind of just throw out the nares, throw out the fairs, because it's going to get rid of that T-Jewel. So I'm curious to know why he goes for that option. It's probably some form of landing mixed up, I would think. Like, you know, the Fire Emblem counters we've been talking about all day, like, they're, they're not super good, but as a bait to the... To any sort of rising aerial out of shield on top of then you get to land you get your opponent across stage neutral is reset so that might be worth it against pikachu when you're not trying to stay in disadvantage for as long as possible especially as ike because you don't want to get thrown off on you don't want to get thrown off stage in and under any circumstance as he finally gets that like everything is Coming up aces for, for Mega, like all the things that you've been looking for and setting up. But yet we still got Pikachu's edge guarding to contend with as he goes to ledge and sets up that. Continues to uh, maneuver around that 50-50. Yeah, and you saw there earlier, like you saw the Thunderjolt mix up. Or yeah, it's just really interesting. Like he always goes for that like Thunderjolt to or sorry, just Thunder to cover the air dodge or cover the jump. I'm curious to know if he's really that confident to go for it because honestly speaking it does seem a little bit risky like imagine you're thundering near ledge and ike just abuse you i wonder if he's aware of that um and i wonder if mega's aware of that too because he doesn't seem to be punishing mousetrap for that either so i'm curious to know how that will play out in this last stock it's, it's now or never if you've got any tricks up the sleeve any any other tools in your toolbox, now's the time to use them. But Mouse Rat seems to be picking away. Ooh, a B. All 
All right, back here to send him off stage. God, that Erdot should get out of there real quick. No. <laughs> He was looking for another air dodge, but got footstooled instead. Ooh, that up air to fair conversion. Yeah, it, it, I, I love that. Just him using the up air to extend these combos as opposed to just going straight for the fair. And now it's close to even. He's, he's keeping Pikachu in the corner, limiting Mouse Rat's tools. Oh, these dash attacks are dangerous. Is if Mega doesn't try to do too much whenever he gets uh, his shield dash attack, like eventually these grabs will get uh, will get Mouse Rat to the percent where Uppy will just straight up kill, regardless of stage position. Right, gotta get up throw and oh, I thought Ooh, he was came down falling aggressive. Um, Mega is coming down super aggressive and said, "That's a floating Pikachu. I can swing at that." Surprised Mouse Rat didn't go for any sort of up air to protect against something of that nature, since when you get hit with the thunder, uh, the amount of lag you suffer is significantly reduced. They're back air. Oh, time is oh, ticking shoot. down, this, by the way. timer! Is oh. he dead? Is that it? No, no, no. Okay, okay. Oh my He's god. across the full PS2. Oh my god. Okay, Mouse Rat has to- oh. He got it! Oh. He got him! Wow. That was amazing. <laughs> what a hard read. Like he knew, he knew the time was coming down. He knew Mouse Rat wanted to get out of there. And how do Pikachu's get off ledge? They quick attack. Quick and he was attack. ready for it. 21 that's, seconds remaining. That's the most beautiful call I've ever seen. And he knew he had to go for it because time was ticking down. He had 20 seconds, he knew. That if, Pe if Mouse Rat went to center stage, he was just going to camp t -Jolt. But he said, you know what? I know you're going to quick attack. I know you really want to go to center stage. Let me just take that stock from you with this up tilt real quick. Just beautiful call out. Is the read like that? Or uh, if you got if you got to Mouse Rat get back to center stage, it's the game is almost done. Like with only 20 seconds left, Ike's, oh, Ike's middling like airspeed. Well, great. It doesn't have enough burst, or ground speed rather, it doesn't have enough burst to catch up to Pikachu as long as they use quick attack from center stage and are able to bounce between these platforms and bounce between ledge. But, you know, Mega made the most of his chance. It's Pikachu on this ledge, you're not getting back to center for free. And so Ike and Mega up tilt themselves right into Loser's Finals.